Current hold time is 20 minutes. Please hold for the next representative. Okay, so 20 minutes on now Delta. Offer a convenient messaging. Your call will be answered in approximately seven minutes. Seven minutes on American, not bad. Your wait time is approximately five to 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes on United, okay. So Frontier, I'm on hold, but they don't tell you how long you're gonna be on hold. Just play the, they just play the music. Your current estimated wait time is less than two minutes. Less than two minutes on Southwest, wow. 20 minutes was the longest wait I found. Nowhere, nowhere as long as being reported. Did I just get lucky or are the wait times being blown out of proportion? I am joined by Paul Hudson. He is the president of FlyersRights.org, the largest airline uh, passenger organization. He's also on the FAA's rulemaking advisory committee. Uh, first of all, um, Paul, I got to tell you, I've got status on a couple airlines because I fly so much for work to all the stories. So I think maybe that had something to do with, with the shortened wait times. Um, but but people say they're waiting hours, four hours. Is this really allowed? Because it's almost like they've got you hostage if you're a passenger. You've got to get through or you're going to be stuck somewhere. Are there any rules with the airlines when it comes to this? Actually, right now, there is no requirement that they answer their phones. And uh, this is one of the, the, the things that drives people crazy. You may have gotten through um, on, on you know, a nine to five basis on a weekday but if you're stranded typically it's going to be off hours and i've personally experienced uh holds of of two to three hours man it's crazy i remember paul back in the day uh, you know, you would call not even that long ago, five years ago, and you would get like someone really educated on the phone that knew the routes, knew the system. Now, when you finally get through, you're lucky if you find one of those people. Sometimes it almost sounds like it's someone in their house. There's an echo. They're talking through the computer. It's almost like they're just using a website to figure out what's going on. Are the airlines just this that desperate to find people? Well, it's it's hard to say. I mean, they they certainly should have the people now and they should have lots of backup. But, um, you know, one way they need to deal with uh, cancellations and, and big delays is simply don't answer your phone. Jeez, well, that's sad to think that that's one way to do it. Are there any tricks, Paul, to get through? Any secret ways? Well, you can, you can talk to a, um, a gate agent um, if you're at the airport and having a problem. They have a special line they can use Although I've, I've been stranded twice in the last three uh, months overnight at airports, and even the gate agents can't always get through. Yeah, I think everybody's been stranded. Everybody's got a story lately. It's happening so much. How much of this is just greed? Um, because airlines got COVID money from the government. They're back to making big money again. The flights are full. It, it just seems greedy that the flights are full and they're making money, but we're treated this way. It's it's really wrong, and part of the reason this has happened is bad planning and bad supervision by the government on the bailout side. But there's also a situation where, since domestically you have no compensation for delays and cancellations, unlike in Europe and international flights, so it can actually make money by by being late and canceling flights. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. We always hear about this passenger bill of rights. Um, but if they cancel your flight, if you get stranded, do you get compensation? Is there anything you can do? You, you, if you get uh, stranded because the flight was canceled, you have a right to a refund of what you paid for that, for that leg of the ticket, even if it's non-refundable. The magic word is involuntary refund. However, um, there, there, unless you're bumped, there's no compensation um, under the current rules in the U.S. for domestic flights. And it seems like with the airlines merging more and more, I mean, there's this uh, Spirit Possible JetBlue Frontier merger. We have less choice out there. And again, it just feels like they have us hostage. Do you think this could actually impact the industry or do people just do they just have to keep flying and we just have to put up with it? Well, we don't have to put up with it. And really, the, the airlines have only one regulator, and that's the Federal uh, Department of Transportation. And uh, 
Pete Buttigieg is the head of that, he's the secretary, and they really need to step up. Um, unlike any other um, purveyor of services to the public, the airlines have only one regulator. There's no state or local regulation allowed, where, where most consumer regulations are. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, Pete Buttigieg, I think, needs to treat this like a crisis, like the crisis it is, because um, you've got people stranded all over all over the country. Um, and I've seen him do a couple of interviews, but, you know, this, this seems like an emergency situation. Uh, Paul Hudson, we appreciate you coming on with us tonight and breaking it down. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.